So now let's get started on our project this week. And what we're going to do is we're going to do the back end part of the image uploader that we did a couple of weeks ago. So this is going to be a good choice because there were multiple back end calls that uh, the uploader used. Um, one to fetch the list of images and one to upload an image and uh, um, another to fetch the contents of an image. So I'm going to start by going to my node projects folder and I'm going to create a new folder here. And I'm going to call that images. But this is going to be the node version of images. And I also want to grab the content from the images project. So I'm going to go to my htdocs folder and I'm going to locate the images project folder. And let me copy this whole folder and paste it into images and call it um, HTML. So it's not all HTML, it's CSS, and let's call it assets instead. There, so assets, and it has the whole jQuery UI folder, and it's got uh, the JavaScript from before, and all of the front end stuff that we needed. And it's also got these PHP files. So the big difference between what we did before and what we're gonna do now is instead of having these PHP files, we're going to implement all of that functionality inside of Node. And then instead of using Apache as our web server, we're going to create a Node web server instead. So let's go ahead and start creating the Node web server. And uh, I'm going to create a new text file. And I'm going to call this webserver.js. And I'm going to edit it in Notepad++. And we're going to start by requiring the HTTP, HTTP package. Which is one of the core node modules. And then we're going to call HTTP create server. And this is going to take a callback, which takes a request and a response. And for now, all we're going to do is say response.writeHead, status code 200, and then we'll add content type is text slash HTML. So we're going to return an HTML document in the body. And then response.end, and we're going to give it HTML head title hello node Looks like enough. And then to run this, we want to call the listen method. And we need to give it a port. So the first parameter passed in is going to be the port number. And let's save it. And then we're going to run it from the command line. So cd to our images folder and we'll say node webserver.js and let's start it on port 8000. Oh, I missed a dot. Should be dot listen. Great, so now our server should be running. Let's go ahead and test it and see if it works. 
So I'm going to open a new page and say localhost colon 8000. And I get my hello node message. No matter what path I give it, it's going to say hello node. Because I'm not looking at the URL at all. So let's go ahead and look at the URL. And that's going to be in the request object. And I'm going to use the URL parser to fetch that and break it down. So var URL is require URL. I'm not sure if I need to, re to use NPM to fetch that module or not, so we'll figure that out. Um, So this will get the URL off of the request object, parse it, and return the URL request. And then let's write that to the console so that we can see it. And now, unlike Apache, um, so when Apache is running and you change one of the source files, um, those changes are going to be automatically pushed to the, um, to the web server. But when you change Node, um, whatever the state of the world was when you loaded um, webserver.js, that's in memory right now, and it doesn't get affected by me changing the file. So if I want to change, if I want to see those changes, I have to stop the web server and rerun it. And now if I go to my web server, my browser, and reload, I get the same result. But here I see what's in that URL request object. So there's a path name, a path, an href. And I can also go ahead and put some arguments in here. So like question ID equals six. And now I have a query with ID equals six. And I can also change this code here to call URL parse and pass in true. And what that does is parses the parameters that get passed in ID equals six. So now the query is an object with an ID property of six. So that's how I can get the parameters that are passed in when somebody uses get method to pass parameters.